Thanks for staying with us. I'm Bill O'Reilly in the Miller Time segment tonight. Let's get right to the sage of Southern California. He joins us now from Santa Barbara. So you heard LeVar Burton, very eloquent tonight, and you're following the Big Bird controversy, and you say? Um, I can't say Big Bird anymore. First off, so I'm going to say Poule Grande because I'm getting sick of hearing Big Bird in this culture every second word. Listen, Sesame Street made 356 bucks. I agree with LeVar on that. They don't need any more Sesame Seed money. But people like LeVar, who's a nice guy, and Sandra Flauk have to realize that they're missing the big point. We're broke. If we spend a whole lot more money, the Chinese, who now own Big Bird, are going to come in, defeather him, glaze him, and serve him as Peking Big Bird, all right? <laughs> they make $350 million a year, and I'm wondering if we have to participate in it. Uh, why don't they kick in some back end towards the national debt? Why does a creep like Bill Moyers get the back end money? Start giving the American people their taste if they're hey, going well, to put stop you. Million. Two things. Now, Big Bird isn't a duck, and and, and so anyway. And and when yeah, when Billy, jokes, Miller is jokes. Uh, <laughs> no reason to tackle me over jokes. Comedian <laughs> trying to do jokes. What are you? Dude, you secret I didn't want service any Chinese for God's sakes? I didn't want Chinese people to be offended. That's why I had to explain. But the back Man. end line that you just dropped on everybody needs to be explained. Bill Moyers, in addition to having his dopey program funded by Miller and me and you, all right, gets videotapes of said program that we pay for and sells them. And that money doesn't come back to us. Guess where it goes? Where does it go, Miller? Where does that DVR, those DVD money go? Uh, to Bill Moyers. Yes, yes. That's the con. And well, all listen, of the merchandising always... for, for, for Big Bird, all of the little Elmo, tickle me Elmo, tickle me uh, Bill Moyers, <laughs> tickle everybody. It ain't coming back to the taxpayer. It's going in somebody's pocket. That's the con. Miller. They always talk about uh, lessons our kids can learn. Money in equals money out. It's a good lesson. I think everybody's got to start pulling their own oar in this country. There's more to it than, uh, you know, puppets. There's money in equals money out, responsibility with a checkbook, nice lesson for our kids. That's the big point they're missing. All right. I'm just, just trying to think. Peking Big Bird. It's got to be marinated. Oh, ooh. Um, uh, I like a nice Sobo noodle with it. Now, listen, <laughs> speaking of empty-headed puppets that you can put your fist up in their skull and move their eyes and mouth, let's talk about Biden. I knew it. I tomorrow, knew it. All right? <laughs> he makes the stuff in his head makes sawdust look like beluga caviar, all right? Shemp Biden is an intellectual chew toy, and they better put an airbag into that podium so he doesn't hurt himself against Paul Ryan. You know, Biden's the guy that said we should partition off Iraq into three separate regions, and that's appropriate because he has a curd for a brain, and Sunni, he's going to get the Shia kicked out of him by Paul Ryan. Now, do you think Ryan's going to go after Biden? Listen, I think Biden could be debating himself and hurt himself, okay? But he doesn't all have to. All Ryan, Ryan has, has to, to do is stand back and just let the uh, car wreck happen. Listen, you heard the Olivier always said, find your mark and say your line. Spencer Tracy just said the same things. That's what, uh, that's what Romney did last night. He was solid. He's in there. Biden is going to flick all around and he's going to do all this little crap stuff. But he's insecure intellectually. Anybody who knows their IQ and pronounces it in public like he does, that tells me that he's afraid of his own brain power. They have Ted Olson simulating Biden in the debate prep with Paul Ryan. I don't know how you simulate Biden. You must have an unlit <laughs> pilot room in the rehearsal space or an unlit pilot light in the rehearsal space. That's how Ted Olson and dumbs it down here. You know, when they put that final hair plug into Biden, they went in a little too deep with the Indianapolis 500 ratchet. <laughs> and I think they severed a discernment lobe up front. And when oh, he has geez. to get out of the bubble, when he has to get out of the bubble at the end of this term yeah. and go back into the real world, he's going to be more screwed than Jimmy Whitmore in the Shawshank connection uh, bagging groceries. He won't know how to be in the outside world. You don't really like the vice president, do you, Miller? I didn't like that in chains thing, Billy. That's crap. Listen, sometimes you give these people a wide berth. I can't do that. I think that that was crap 
to debase racism with stupid crap like Mitt Romney wants to do that. Racism is the great national shame. For him to co-opt it for crap like that to be the cool guy in the room, I've had it with Joe Biden. All right. Now, we were going to do uh, Warren and Brown. I'm going to put that off for next week because I didn't want to interrupt Miller uh, describing the vice president and his strengths and weaknesses, although the strengths kind of eluded me in that monologue, Miller. Did I, did I miss it? Like I said, Billy, you're often tough on the defenders on this show, and you're more, uh, you know, you give more room to the other people. I made my point the best I could. I'm sorry if you found it lacking. No, 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 not me, Miller, because I don't want you to direct your ire at me. So nothing lacking. The well, listen, they had to replace Elizabeth Warren up there with somebody competent in the Boston area, like Bobby Valentine. <laughs> the departed manager of the Red Sox.